Vice-Chancellor, Deputy President, Lord Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Bobby McAlpine was born and spent his early childhood in the Rosset and Gresford area of Wales between Chester and Wrexham. He was educated at Harrow School where his final report noted that he had not taken full advantage of all the opportunities the school offered. He entered the family firm Alfred McAlpine and Son, much the smaller of the two McAlpine construction companies, and was sent on an apprenticeship with attendance at Wolverhampton Tech and construction sites in Walsall and Wolverhampton. I believe this would now be described as an all-round culture shock. Bobby moved on to take a course in quantity surveying under the chief surveyor at the company office in Hooton and attend the technical college in Liverpool. In 1953, aged 21, Bobby made the first of many visits to construction sites in South Africa and then parts of Rhodesia and Tanganyika, now Zimbabwe and Tanzania, respectively. At home in the UK, the company was pioneering in allowing works managers equal status on site with the site agent, invariably an engineer. It was the promotion and recognition of works management in this way that gave the company an edge in the major developments that were to follow. The company, by now public, was strong in North Wales, the northwest of England, and to some extent the North Midlands, although in that area they were constrained by an agreement with the other side of McAlpine Construction. All of this was to change with the award of the M6 contract to build the motorway from Warrington to Preston. From 1960 to the mid-1970s, a massive period of road building in the UK, Alfred McAlpine, of which Bobby McAlpine was by now deputy chairman, were undertaking 20% of that business. At the same time, some major contracts were being undertaken in Africa, including a 725-kilometer uh, pipeline from Durban to Johannesburg through the Drakensberg Mountains. As the reputation of the company grew, so did the projects, with a range of civil works, including power stations, reservoirs, and even the Vauxhall Motors factory at nearby Ellesmere Port. At this time, however, the political climate began to change, and opposition to major road developments began to take shape. The company undertook further contracts in other parts of Africa, but found themselves on a steep learning curve. The Sudan was a very different place to southern Central Africa, and pre-independent southern Sudan was very different from northern Sudan. A major agricultural contract near the Ethio-Sudanese border during a period of heightened fighting in the Ethiopian Civil War was the most unprofitable of the company's history. Even closer to home, in Northern Ireland, the company experienced pipeline difficulties with two senior site staff being kneecapped by the IRA. Overall, Bobby spent 44 years with the company through some remarkable successes and some clearly very difficult times. For many years, he shouldered substantial responsibilities as deputy chairman and then chairman. The company is now part of Carillion, who also took over Tarmac. The family name continues strongly with Sir Robert McAlpine, but Alfred McAlpine, under the leadership of Bobby McAlpine, achieved much. And indeed, that leadership in construction engineering has been widely recognized. Bobby was chairman of the export group for the construction industry in the 1970s, as well as chairman of the Federation of Civil Engineers Liaison Group with the Department of Transport. His autobiography is titled One Shot at Life, but in fact, it reads like at least three shots at life, and it would be remiss of me not to refer to a separate career in racing. As owner-breeder, Bobby had an interest in several memorable horses, including Precipice Wood, Cormorant Wood, Roller Head, and English Dreaver, and he has won four of England's most prestigious Group 1 races, namely the Ascot Gold Cup, the Champion Stakes, the International Stakes, and the Locking Stakes. Furthermore, he was a racecourse steward for over 40 years at Wolverhampton, Bangor, Chester, Haydock, and Aintree. He went on to become chairman and president at Chester Racecourse, where the whole operation has been transformed on his watch. He's also seen many changes in his 20 years as a director of Aintree Racecourse. 
The third area of activity I should mention is that of shooting and the family shooting field at nearby Clonarmon, which was developed into one of the premier shoots in the country. I'm afraid I don't have time to plow a rich, a rich furrow of anecdote, but must mention Bobby being shot by an old Etonian. This did not stop him becoming High Sheriff of Cheshire in 1994. I've one page today, and Bobby's autobiography runs to nearly 300. I'm constrained and will conclude with this section of his conclusion. The two achievements I will carry to the grave are the part I played in the progress of Chester Racecourse and the making of Clonarmon as a great shooting estate. In both cases, the results are due to exceptional managers, Richard Thomas at Chester and David Matthews at Clonarmon. Both possess great intelligence, the ability to think ahead, and exceptional energy. There's something there for all of us, not least the wisdom and modesty in recognizing the contributions of others to our own success. Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of his outstanding contribution to the British construction industry, in the name of the Council and of the Senate, I present to you for admission to the degree of Doctor of Engineering honoris causa in this university, Robert McAlpine. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Engineering honoris causa in this university. Congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. It gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Robert McAlpine to address the congregation. Vice-Chancellor, <coughs> my Lord Mayor, um, Mr. Recorder, ladies and gentlemen, I must start <coughs> by thanking the Vice-Chancellor and University for bestowing this great honor, which I accept on behalf of the wonderful team of engineers my company was fortunate to employ. I spent 44 years in the family company and was lucky to start business in one of the great eras of civil engineering. The motorway program got into full swing. There was a massive program for increasing our energy resources. Airports were expanding, flood defenses, and um, other great civil engineering enterprises. I was 18 when I spent three weeks at Gatwick Airport where my company was constructing the runways. The terminal building cost less than one million pounds and in the 64 years since, hundreds of millions have been spent on buildings and virtually nothing on the runways. The wonderful network that the County Surveyor of Lancashire of uh, Motorways, Sir James Drake oversaw and which stretched into Cheshire is so clogged up 
that there are now delays everywhere. The energy program is in tatters, and a bad winter could see the lights go out at any time. We once had a thriving nuclear industry and built our own nuclear stations. Now the only one to be built is, is by a French company at the cost of tens of billions. The only meaningful airport expansion has been at Manchester Airport in the teeth of demonstrations which dog every attempt to achieve progress in enlarging our infrastructure. Sadly, we are now fine, far behind our main world competitors, and it is imperative that we wake up, and I am particularly appealing to the youth of this country. I may not be here when the lights finally go out, but you will be, and you need to wake up our politicians who have neglected our infrastructure for over two decades, preferring to concentrate on issues which more immediately affect voters. There is widespread belief that the country is too developed, too covered in concrete. This is not correct. Anyone who flies over Britain in a small plane, as I did for many years, will see that a large part of the country is relatively undeveloped. We also need to take a more positive attitude to demonstrators. I remember my sister bringing home an 18-year-old friend, and my father asked her what she did. She replied, I demonstrate. A bit taken aback, he said, what do you demonstrate about? to which he never received a reply, and there are far too many of those around. The classic case locally was the A483, a dual carriageway from Chester to well the other side of Wrexham. Six objectors, none of whom were seriously inconvenienced by the road, held it up for 10 years. Finally, I should say that though the name of my company Alfred McAlpine has disappeared, as has Tarmac Construction. The merger of the two companies with the name Carillion has created the most successful large civil engineering firm in the country. The industry has been devastated by lack of work, but hopefully this worldwide company will live on for a long time. Thank you all very much indeed. I am extremely proud and honored uh, by you all. Thank you.